Hi guys, so let's have a look at uh, the concept of economic growth and the production possibility curve. Now this PPC is very, very useful in terms of actually distinguishing between shorter term improvements in economic growth and looking at the longer term uh, trend rate of growth that can be actually sustained. Okay, so remember the PPC shows the potential output of the economy and it shows that the economy must make a choice, and this is very important to note here, the economy must make a choice between how much uh, should be produced in terms of capital goods and how much should be produced in terms of consumer goods. Okay, so if we begin at point A, um, bearing in mind that the economy has PPC1 as its potential boundary of its uh, production possibilities, uh, then we begin at point A and if we improve the uh, actual employment of labour and the utilisation of land and the investment into capital goods and ensure that there's uh, better resource allocation taking place and better uh, resource utilisation, then the economy could move to point B on the edge of its production possibility curve. Okay, so that would very much reflect short-run improvements in economic growth. But to generate those longer-term improvements in the trend rate of economic growth, you need to generate some uh, large shifts in the productive capacity of the economy or improvements in aggregate supply. Now that would enable the economy to move from point B to point C. So how would you do this? Well, if we just remember that output's a function of land, labour, capital, together with the efficiency and the technological progress that's made in the economy, if the quality of those factor inputs improves as a result of perhaps better education, better innovation with regard to capital goods and technology, uh, and better efficiency due to uh, improved infrastructure and, and uh, yeah, other, other suitable examples, then the productive capacity of the economy can move and the economy can now attain uh, production possibility curve to that and possibly even reach point C. Okay, so that's an important uh, concept just to understand. Just a little bit of revision when it comes to uh, these PPCs. Uh, because the technical elements are important to understand here. Firstly, it's downward sloping. All PPCs are downward sloping. Why is that the case? Well, because resources are finite. There's only limited resources available, of course. So that's a really important point to understand. Secondly, it highlights opportunity cost so it highlights the cost of making a choice. Uh, okay, so you can actually determine whether to actually uh, uh, produce at point D here uh, or produce at point E. But the cost of the opportunity cost of moving from point D to point E and enjoying a small gain in consumer goods would be foregoing a much larger uh, level of capital goods there. Okay, so that's an important point to note. Uh, now, the traditional PPC bows outwards, okay, so uh, we can see that here, and this is due to the increasing opportunity cost that we see. For instance, if we start at point F here and move to point G, you can see the actual uh, loss of capital goods for the increase in consumer goods that takes place here um, is, is really quite small. However, when we get down to point D, uh, moving from point D rather to point E, we can see that the actual uh, distance, the vertical distance or the level of capital goods that now need to be foregone is much, much larger. Okay, um, this also helps us to understand the uh, concept of diminishing marginal returns as well. And that is that if you actually reach point D here, there's only so much satisfaction that you're actually going to derive from increasing your level of consumption. Okay, uh, and finally, we can also see that this reflects uh, the fact that some resources will be better suited uh, to producing different goods, that there will be a degree of perhaps occupational uh, immobility, so labourers will not be able to naturally move from producing one type of good to another very easily. Uh, okay, so this is clearly reflected here because 
just in terms of reducing this level of um, production of capital goods, you can gain a big increase in the level of consumer goods there, of course. Okay, right, I hope that's useful, guys. Thanks a lot.